سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اليوم آه 14 من شهر جمادى الآخرة 1443 الموافق ل 17 من شهر يناير 2021 نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك الداء والدواء أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك فينا وفيما نتعلمه وأن يغفر لنا الزلات ويغفر للمؤلف ويرفع درجته في العليين So uh, بإذن الله عز وجل uh, Today إن شاء الله we continue uh, from where we stopped last, uh, last time And if I'm not uh, wrong we are supposed to start from uh, the saying of uh, the مؤلف uh, الصبر uh, على غض البصر أي سر من الصبر على ألم ما بعده so this one talks about the, the comparison between the pain that uh, happens to a person when he closes his eyes and lowers his gaze. Although he wants to enjoy by looking at the opposite gender, but he managed to control his, his desire. So there is a bit of pain, you know, an alam concerning that uh, uh, matter. But the alam that happens you know, after a person look at the opposite gender, the alam, the, the pain that the person is going to be suffering from will be far greater than the pain that he is uh, sacrificing. So, Ibn Qayyim says, uh, looking at the text and also the reality, we will ask a person to uh, favor this one over the second one, which uh, will uh, probably destroy his, his life. قال الشاعر كل الحوادث مبداها من النظر ومعظم النار من مستصغر الشرر كم نظرة بلغت من قلب صاحبها كما بلغ السهم بين القوس والوتر والعبد ما دام ذا طرف يقلبها في أعين غير موقوف على الخطر يسر مقلته ما ضر مهجته لا مرحبا بسرور عاد بالضرر so Ibn Qayyim quoted uh, this uh, excellent uh, statement and uh, lines of poetry of the Sha'ir. He says, Kullu al-hawadithi mabdaha min al-nadhari. He says, all of those negative consequences that are uh, taking place, which lead sometimes to zina and some other bad things, you know, uh, 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 homosexuality, lesbianism, and, and on and on, uh, masturbation, and any, any other uh, 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 evil you know, attitude of this uh, nature that somebody might be having. He said the beginning of all of these is from the nava. Nava means the eye sight, the sight. You know, it begins from there. When somebody says something which he can't be uh, patient, then what comes after that is the tragedy. If he managed to lower his gaze and to control his desire, this uh, prob probably will not, will not, will not happen. So he says, وَمُعْضَمُ النَّارِ مِنْ مُسْتَشْغَرِ الشَّرَرِ just like the fire, it starts from what? Um, a little, and they keep increasing, 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 and then it will go out of control. Kam nadharatin, balagat min qalbi sahibiha, ma balagat sahami bayna al qawsi wal watari. It says, how many times you see nadhara? What is nadhara? That's a look that somebody has, which reach a place in the, in the heart, you know, that kills the heart, you know, subhanAllah. At the end of the day, it kills the heart. You know, just like the effect and the result that happens when uh, the qawus and water are being used. The qawus is the, is the, is the bow. The water is a, is a rope, you know, that you, you put on the bow, which you put the arrow and shoot, shoot it. So when you have that one, you shoot, you know what kind of consequence is going to happen. So when the eyes shoot, you know, it comes back to the heart. As you're going to see in some other uh, uh, abiyat, he will be quoting. You're shooting something, but subhanAllah, the arrow goes there and come back to you immediately and shoot your heart. You know, and this is exactly what is happening. You know, that's why you have find life uh, not easy. You know? A person will be depressed, and he doesn't know the source. He doesn't know the source of this depression. It is none other than the eyes that somebody you know, did not restrict it. You know, you know, the eyes did not restrict it. So uh, that's uh, 
uh, what do you call uh, it is happening so the person will not know what, what is the cause of the depression you know but it is the reason uh, I mean it is uh, because of that uh, look that he has towards that person which he is not supposed to look at قال كمبلغ السهم بين القوس والوتر والعبد ما دام ذا طرف يقلبها أو يقلبه في أعين الغير موقوف على الخطر يو الله he says that as long as you did not restrict your side you know you remember in uh, in the uh, manzumat al-adab that uh, book that we have completed which uh, most probably you already forgot even the name <laughs> he says uh, Ibn Abdul Qawi says in that book, he says, وَطَرْفُ الْفَتَى يَا صَاحِ رَائِلُ فَرْجِهِ وَمُتْعِبُهُ فَقْضُدْهُ مَسْطَعَةَ تَحْتَجِ He says, وَطَرْفُ الْفَتَى You like, you like. وَطَرْفُ الْفَتَى يَا صَاحِ رَائِلُ فَرْجِهِ وَمُتْعِبُهُ فَقْضُدْهُ مَسْطَعَةَ تَحْتَجِ He says, طَرْفُ الْفَتَى The eyesight of a person. He says, Ra'id Farji. It's just like a messenger that the Farj, the private part, it's sending. SubhanAllah. This is an accurate definition of the relationship between the eyes and the private part. So it's just like a messenger of the private part. He send that one to go and see something. He says, Ra'id Farji wa mut'ibuhu walabud. And it is going to cause you a lot of trouble in your life. When you don't close your eyes, you're going to be in, it. I mean, in in trouble. And this is what this one is saying. Well, Abdu Mada 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 Tarfin Yukalibu Fi Ain Al Ghairi Mawkufun Al Al Khatari. As long as you keep your eyes unrestricted, you keep on looking at anything. You know, sometimes we have justification for that, silly justifications. You know. uh, for instance, somebody who's been taught by the opposite gender. But then they open their eyes, they keep on looking at, at them, staring at them. Okay, make sure that you make it out, inshallah. No, just go away, sir. Ask your sister to send you. Sorry. So he says, uh, when you cannot manage to restrict your eyes, it's going to put you into a lot of uh, trouble. You know. So when you, uh, as I said, sometimes people have justification, their own justification, silly justifications. For instance, the opposite gender is teaching. You know. No, wait a minute. So, so, so when they are teaching. Somebody says that one of the, the process of learning to make it possible and also to be able to get it uh, uh, correctly is to focus on that person who is teaching. You know, especially when a sister is teaching, when you focus, that's a problem. A brother, when he's teaching, and he, that's uh, somehow it'll be okay because you find from the Nusus, Aisha radiallahu anha, watching the brothers who are playing. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam let her do, do that. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam let them uh, uh, let her do that. You know. So we learn from this that the emphasis that Sharia put on the brothers looking at the sisters is more. So sometimes a person will tell you for educational purpose. If he doesn't look, he will not understand properly. You know. I don't know who is giving them this khutbah because it doesn't work. He the one who is saying that he knows that it doesn't work. But these are all khutbah from uh, shaitan you know, uh, that uh, we, we accept it. You know. And uh, sometimes a person will say that, no, I need to know what is going on. You know, he wants to know what is going on in the world. That means he is going to focus in... Uh, He wanted to focus in the news being uh, given, you know. That's why he's looking. And then end up disturbing his heart. These are all facts, you know. You know, you do it, the result is going to be the same. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not restrict the ruling. He says, Min Abu Sarihim and the scholars told us the situations whereby a person can look and there, there will be no problem with that. 
you want to marry business purpose to know who you're dealing with you know you just look the look that and once is okay you see the person who are you dealing with, so you know that person that's 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 all medication you know somebody who comes for a medication and there is no any other uh, way except that you are going to do it and you are not of the same gender then you look these are the exceptions mentioned by by the scholars other than that it will be just claims and justifications mentioned by any one of us which never work at the end of the day the disease is going to take place and a person will suffer and give the scholars a job to go and look for the fatwa concerning his his case so Ibn al-Qayyim says in this bait wala abdu mada 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 tarfin yuqallibuhu fi a'yun al-ghayri mawqufun ala al-qatari as long as you have the eyes that you don't control you keep on uh, uh, and casting your 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 your, your look on uh, things and issues that last month tells you not to look at them you know you're going to put yourself into trouble whatever but what I put and also advising it don't you ever say that yes you will close your eyes when the bad thing comes no from the beginning do not go for that you know try your best to stay away from it that will give you a support from your heart because not everyone can manage to do this you're listening to the news when they have a uh, an inappropriate uh, you know uh, a view that is coming you know you will manage to control your your eyes and uh, not everyone can do can do that so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the truth uh, listen to this uh, text he says well abdu ma dama da tarfin yuqallibuhu fi a'yun ghayri maqufun al khatari so as long as you open your eyes unrestricted you know you don't restrict your eyes you just look anyhow he says, you're going to put yourself in a very risky situation, in a very dangerous uh, situation. And this person will be given, you know, uh, comfort, you know, and sending some happiness, temporary kind of happiness to what? To his eyes because the eye enjoy looking you know and then and the funniest one maybe you never you will ever hear in your life the funniest person you you yeah we we heard about you know concerning looking at the opposite gender is the person who look at uh, another a person a sister and when they told him ya <laughs> close your eyes you know the last one hotel commanded you to lower your gaze he said, no, 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 no. He is not focusing on her. He's not looking at her. But he's just applying the tadabbur. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we should contemplate in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to see how great is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that helped him to say, subhanallah. You know. <laughs> because when he see, he will say, how beautiful, you know, how strong is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create this beautiful, you know, entities so he said it calls him tadabbur you know look at how shaitan is giving khutbah to these these guys they come and justify and you know in the in the state in the name of the deen some people are doing this in the name of the deen some people are doing this may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good and tawfiq as well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya'lamu kha'inat al-ayuni wa ma tukhfi al-siru Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the kha'inat al-ayuni the one who is looking in secret and that which the heart is hiding you know so we don't joke with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, close your eyes. It means you should close your eyes. When you want to make it correct, the only way to make it correct is to find that person who you want to look and marry her. And that's it. You get everything. Rather than getting something which will earn you trouble in, in the future. So he says, what happened is that you enjoy. Your eyes is enjoying. But subhanallah, at the same time, your heart will be suffering. So you are killing your heart by doing something which is giving the eyes enjoyment which one is more important you know that the one who is leading you in your body is your heart so you destroy your heart by giving something to your eyes which will cause you trouble also in the future you Allah it will cause you trouble in the future you look at things which you shouldn't look at them it will cause you trouble in the future if a person doesn't repent a person need to quickly repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hold upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Maybe be idhn Allah Ta'ala, you will get the preservation of your limbs in the future when you reach the old age.
your eyesight will be protected by Allah. Like we found that person who aged very old, very old. And the past those people passes, you know, hundred and something, you know. And they are so strong. They go to the farms, they pray the night prayers, you know. Much stronger than us. Nowadays when a person reach fifty, you know, you'll be thinking that this person is see in the in the seventies or what? In the past it wasn't like that. So they ask him, what is the secret behind you being strong even at this age? He said, Tilka hiya jawarihu. Hafidna ha fi sigar. Fa hafidha ha Allahu alayna wa nahnu kibar. He says, these are the jawarih, the limbs that we manage to protect, you know, to take care of them, you know, when we are young by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah help us to protect our limbs when we grow older. It's one of the secrets of the preservation of the limbs and a person not to reach the age of, uh, uh, I mean, that age where, where you go out of control, you know, is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to obey Him with your limbs. They will be protected, inshallah, in the, in the future. It's part of the meaning of the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِنَّ uh, لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ You know, whoever goes away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has a very complicated life in the future. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make his life complicated, a difficult life in this life, you know. And he says, فَمَنِ اتَّبَعْهُ دَا فَلَا يَدِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى If you follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never go astray, and you will never, you know, uh, get destroyed in terms of religion and entropy. So this abiyat, you know, uh, it should be written with the ink of gold, or the water of the oil, the eyes. قَالَوْ مِنْ آفَاتِ النَّظَرْ أَنَّهُ يُورِثُ الْحَسَرَاتِ وَالزَّفَارَاتِ وَالْحَرَقَاتِ فَيَرَى الْعَبْدُ مَا لَيْسَ قَادِرًا عَلَيْهِ وَلَا صَابِرًا عَلَيْهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ أَعْظَمِ الْعَذَابِ Please listen to this carefully because it is absolutely correct. Ibn Qayyim says, he said one of the evil consequences of looking at the things that Allah SWT does not want you to look at, looking at the opposite gender, you know, especially from the brothers to the sisters, brothers looking at the sisters with no permission to do that. He says one of the evil consequences, it earns a person hasarat. You know. That's nadama, regret, depression, you know, uh, crying out from inside. This is internal suffering. All of these words that Ibn Qayyim is mentioning, they are referring to internal suffering that a person will be dealing with. And you know this is the worst type of disease where you are suffering internally. You know that sometimes a person, a person will tell you that he is sitting at home or in his office or wherever, you know. But he feels the internal fear and he doesn't know why, you know. Internally he is being punished, you know. By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't work. Sometimes it, it appears. The best remedy for this is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repentance. Whenever you find yourself into this kind of washa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, yani make you feel this fear internally in your heart, the best remedy for this is to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to maximize your remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dhikr. It really helps a lot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant his good. And uh, one of the causes for that, is this looking at the opposite gender without permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what happened after this, when you look at things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to look at them, He says, يَرَى مَا لَيْسَ قَادِرًا عَلَيْهِ وَلَا صَابِرًا عَلَيْهِ Subhanallah. You know, please tell me, which punishment in this life is greater than this, you know? You see that which you have no ability to reach it. وَلَا صَابِرًا عَنْهُ And you cannot be patient. SubhanAllah. You can be patient because your heart is always inclining to it. But at the same time, you can say that there is almost no way for you to get it. SubhanAllah. Like what I said, somebody, somebody sees a sister and he's in the last part of the world from the west, you know. And she lives in the last part of the world in the east and is very poor. And he did not control his eyes and go and look at her. He doesn't even know where she is. But that's a random example. 
But the, uh, the, 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 the uh, what do you call the other example which usually happens is uh, a person who is extremely poor. He did not close his eyes and he looked at the girl that belongs to, uh, the, uh, mashallah, to the family that are at the highest position in the country. Yeah, we will not say it is imp uh, I mean, impossible for him to, uh, <laughs> to marry that daughter, but usually according to the culture, nobody is even thinking of this. Nobody is even thinking of this. So when he doesn't close his eyes, he went and looked at her, there is no way for them to give him. And then at the end of the day, he cannot be patient. The images are kept coming from his, uh, I mean, to his brain, but he cannot get rid of them. What is the best remedy to go and get that sister and marry her? There is no way for them to give, to give him, you know. Especially when you have these cultural barriers that we have nowadays. She only has to marry from her own people. He only have to, has to marry from his own people. You know, Arab, they don't give non-Arab, non-Arab, they don't give Arabs, you know, uh, people from Asia and all of these things that you already know, you know. You have different languages, you have different race, you have different colors, you know, you have different uh, uh, type of, uh, uh, there's so many things, you know, funny things you hear in this life, you know, subhanAllah. And the way people have been disrespected because of this, as if they're looking for Hur al Eid. Or somebody in Jannah will die in Why? Just because of the cultural barrier. He is not from us. We want to keep that culture. And Sharia has nothing to do with this. But anyway, I'm not. Uh, I'm just bringing this as an example of things which you might not be able to reach it. So it is always better for you to follow the remedy given to you by the Sharia. What is that? Close your eyes. The solution, that's the only solution. Close your eyes. Do not look at the first face. That's why the scholar said, looking at the sister that you decided to marry is permissible for you to look at her until the time you see that which will attract you to, to marry her. That's permissible. It's not like to say that you are the only one who can look at her whenever you want. Well, no, this is haram. But you just have the permission, the door will be open for you to look the first time and to make sure that you get something that will attract you to marry her. If that is not enough, you can arrange for another one. But you can't say that every time you have to come and keep looking, keep looking, you're the only one who is permitted to do that. No, it doesn't make sense. Your brother also is thinking in that way, you know. And then this law is going to be violated completely. So the scholar said, this is restricted to possibilities. Yeah, they said if he, do, if he knows that somebody like him cannot be able to get the hand of this woman, it is not permissible for him to look at the first place. And this thing that Ibn Qayyim is mentioning, that you're going to see that which you cannot be patient after you see it, and also there is no way for you to get it. So you will live in a state of punishment. And he's going to tell you why this issue is very important because they found some people, this disease kept increasing because they look and they couldn't be patient and they couldn't get those ones. At the end of the day, SubhanAllah, their heart cannot uh, forget what it sees. You know, it keep, uh, keeps coming from time to time until death. They were burning from inside until death. Believe it or not, some of them, instead of saying La ilaha illallah, they die mention the name of their girlfriends. What do you think about this? You know, subhanAllah. Some of them died mentioning about their boyfriend. And subhanAllah, if it is a girl mentioning her boyfriend, she died, is already evil. But what if the boy is mentioning another boy when he dies? So we have to be very careful. This seems to be so conservative, but these are the remedies. These are the solution to the tragedy that the Ummah is suffering from nowadays. Every country you go, you find this disease in existence. What is the best way out? You should lower your gaze. And keep that barrier that Allah Subhanahu put without breaking it. He said, this is one of the greatest punishment that Allah Subhanahu placed on a person who is not restricting his eyesight. 
أن ترى ما لا صبر لك عنه ولا عن بعضه ولا قدرة لك عليه to see that you cannot be patient you know and not even you can be patient you know to get all of it even you cannot be patient you know uh, to get only part of it you know ولا قدرة لك عليه and at the same time there is no way for you to get any part of it قال الشاعر وكنت متى أرسلت طرفك رائدا لقلبك يوما أتعبتك, أتعبتك المناظر رأيت الذي لا كله أنت قادر عليه ولا عن بعضه أنت صابر He says وكنت متى أرسلت طرفك رائدا You know and your situation your position you know your status is that of a person who is sending his eyesight to go and get him a message to go and watch something to bring back the, the information to him he says at a rasul for your heart he says at abad kal manaziru you know those things that you are looking at are going to cause you a lot of trouble in in the future why is that he said ra'ayt alladhi la kulluhu anta qadirun he says you are going to see that thing that you cannot be able to afford it wala an ba'dihi anta sabir and you cannot even be patient you know to stay away from some part of it in some countries you know uh, it's okay you can marry but it is so expensive you know so expensive so expensive not to belittle you know people and the human beings but even hurul ain that are in jannah and the people that a person is going to be staying with them in jannah you know uh, doesn't face difficulties like this you worship allah swt which allah swt call easy very simple within the affordability and then you're going to be a, a buying or or taking a life of responsibility you know and worries from time to time but then the price is very high you know and you have to go for that so sometimes you'll be looking at the person that you wanted to marry but unfortunately the the, the mahar in the country is very high you know we're talking about 150 in some countries you know so subhanallah you can understand why shabab is going into other things you know other method and especially when that country, without mentioning a name, make it open for everyone to visit any site, a website, and channel, whatever they want. You restricted them from marriage. You make it very difficult for somebody to, uh, to afford it. First of all, because of the cultural barriers and differences, you know, he sees what somebody he wanted, but he cannot go to that person. Why? Because he doesn't belong to them. And according to the culture of that country, you know his tribe is lower than the tribe of the god so they will not give so that's why ibn qayyim says at the first place the solution is to close your eyes and lower your gaze as allah swt commanded you because you're going to see things which you cannot afford and at the same time you cannot be patient so you shouldn't try to know about them and then you give relief to to your heart otherwise your life will be in this uh, nature until the time you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala probably like what happened to many of them قال وهذا البيت يحتاج إلى شرح ومراده أنك ترى ما لا تصبر عن شيء ما لا تصبر عن شيء منه ولا تقدر على شيء منه فإن قوله لا كله أنت قادر عليه نفي القدرة على الكل التي لا تنبغي إلا بنفي القدرة على so this is exactly what we have mentioned you know you're going to see things you cannot afford them and you can't be patient you know, subhanallah you cannot be patient they're very attractive you know they are going to make your heart connected to them you see those images being coming to you from time to time and they never go you know those people who stays away from things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it prohibited upon them you know subhanallah they tell you that we stay for ages and the thing is coming to our brain. We do not look for it, but it is coming to our brain from time to time. After a long period of time, and then they manage to get rid of it. And that's why from the beginning, the Sharia asks you to put a barrier between you and them to give your heart relief. 
من أرسل لحظاته فما أقلعت إلا وقد تش... يت... وهو يتشحط بينهن قتيلا كما قيل يا ناظرا ما أقلعت لحظاته حتى تشحط بينهن قتيلا ابن القيم says he says سبحان الله he says how many times we see a person who keeps sending his eyesight with no restriction the way Allah SWT wanted him to do but he did not do that and he's not wanting to stop looking at those things that Allah SWT doesn't want him to look at them the images you know he forgot the evil consequence that is taking place in his heart which is the destruction of the heart and taking away the peace the tranquility that is supposed to exist in the heart for a person to attain a success and comfort in this life he would not be having any any of this so he says you will keep on looking without restricting your side he says until the time you see a person crumbling jumping in the middle of his blood you know when you slaughter an animal when you leave the animal how do you see the animal moving and jumping and all of these things so this is exactly what he's saying metaphorically it's like you are killing yourself and this is who you are although we see a person you know smiling but internally that person is not going to be happy that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it if I see a person smiling but inside he's burning that's what they call pretending to be happy pretending that everything is okay but in reality it is not yeah in reality it is it is not قال يا ناظر ما أقلعت الحظات حتى تشحط بينهن قتيلا قال ولي أبيات ابن القيم says uh, I have also some أبيات this are the poetry that I did myself he says مل السلامة فاقتدت لحظاته وقفا على طلل يظن جميل ما زال يتبع إثر إثره لحظاته حتى تشحط بينهن قتيلا so this is also almost exactly like the previous uh, bait. Ibn Qayyim says, somebody was uh, bought of uh, peace. You know? He doesn't like afia, he doesn't like peace. You know? So what did he do? He decided to break that, uh, the barrier, you know, between him and the haram. You know, he doesn't want to stay in a state of peace. You know? Because wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, living in the way Allah SWT wants you to live is the only way for you to earn peace in this life. That's the only way. We want it in our own way, but it would never work, you know. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Alladina amanu wa amilu salihati, tuba lahum husnu maab. Alladina amanu wa lam yalbisu imanahum bi zulmin, ulaika lahum al amnu wa hum muhtadun." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Those who believe, wa lam yalbisu imanahum bi zulmin." And they never mix their iman with zulm. This is the shirk and disobedience. And going against the last Muhammad and oppression in all of its forms. He says, And these are the people that will be granted peace in this life and peace in the hereafter. Tell me, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the statement of Allah Subhanahu He said, the only way for you to get peace is to believe in Allah Subhanahu Taala. And what uh, believing in Allah Subhanahu Taala means? What does believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mean? It means nothing except to follow the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the instructions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to not go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to do. Then you will be able to get the peace. So it says, أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ And these are the people who will be guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will control their life, you know, give them what they want. You know, and protect them and protect their religion, you know, protect whatever they're doing, protect their family, protect their life, you know. Oh Muhtadun, Allah SWT says, Alladina Aman wa lam bisu imanahum bi dhumin, ula ikalahum al amnu oh muhtadun. So you shouldn't get bored of the peace. You know. So Ibn Qaim say there are some people who don't like this. So they go and see something which they think is so beautiful, and they keep looking at it. Hatta tashahatu bayna hu qatil. Keep on following the, those images, which they thought is something, you know, but it's nothing except a mirage, you know. The mirage, you know, that's a uh, thing that sahab, you know, that you see, you think this is water, but when you reach the place, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Yahsabu dhamaan ma hatta ida jahu lam yajrhu shayya." And this is exactly how it is, you know. You hear a lot of those 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 things, you know. After the evil thing happened. 
and then they have no they have no 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 value you know that that sister or that person will have no value to them you know subhanallah you can see the amount of the disrespect they have she will be depressed but this is something that cannot be rectified which happened you know subhanallah but unfortunately who is who is listening to this you know you talk about this, people think you're exaggerating, you're restricting people from their freedom, you're making life so difficult. But subhanAllah, every day you are hearing, you know, these uh, evil consequences taking place, or you're reading about them. You're reading about them. So what is the solution? The solution is this, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it in a very simple way. Do not go through that thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you should stay away from it. Qala min al أن لحظة الناظر سهم لا يصل إلى المنظور إليه حتى يتبوأ مكانا من قلب الناظر. He said it is so amazing to see the way the arrow which is shot by the uh, the, the the person the the ناظر ناظر is somebody who is looking at something. It's like he's shooting. So this the arrow he is using to shoot. The arrow will never leave its position, you know. The bow, you know, will never leave that uh, that position to go to the to the to the al marmi. You know, the thing that you are shooting will never reach that place until the time it prepare a position for itself in the heart of the shooter. Ibn Qayyim said, "It is so amazing to see that this is how it works when a person is looking at the opposite gender. It's like he's shooting an arrow." When he shoot that arrow, the arrow will make sure it prepare a position for it because he's going to come back. It goes and come back. It has to have a place in the heart first. Subhanallah. 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 Ihbis Rasulaka layatika bin Atali. Allah Akbar. Ibn Qayyim says, he talked to that person who is shooting those arrows, and he's referring to the one who is not restricting his eyesight. He says, Bisiham al Lahzi. They said that Siham al Lahzi is the arrows of seeing. Allah is the sight. Mujtahid, and who is, I mean, doing uh, Mujtahid here means uh, putting all efforts to make sure that he see that image, whether in reality, you know, or in the pictures. Or in the televisions or whatever, the videos, whatever he's saying. He trying, cannot miss the news, you know. All the time he comes. And not for the sake of the news, you know. But although there's sometimes they say it's for the news, but sometimes it's not for the sake of the news from for some cases. It is just about somebody who's given the, the news who they cannot be patient in seeing. In seeing that person. So they come from time to time. And they talk about that also from time to time. He said, Shabab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Yusliha Shabab al Muslimin. So he says, Until Qatil. You know, you are shooting something to kill that thing. He said, But until Qatil. But you are the Qatil. Qatil means the, the murdered one. He shoot to kill somebody, but unfortunately, you are killing yourself. Until Qatil. He says, You are the Qatil. He says, you are, the, you are killing yourself. Bimatarmi, you know, when the thing you are shooting, you know, it is coming back to kill you. It will never go to that person or that thing that you are shooting. They live a good life. They're looking at that person, that person will end up living a good life, but you are suffering back there. You know, the one who is sending his eyesight. What is he looking for? He's looking for a remedy, a medicine, a cure, to give his eyes some enjoyment, you know, some relief. So Ibn Qayyim said the intention is to give the eyes relief. He said, Ihbis Rasulak. He said, I really advise you to keep your Rasul, your messenger. Do not send him to anyone. He said, just, just keep that, keep that Rasul. La yatika bil Atabil. Keep that Rasul so that it will not come back to you with destruction. He said, stay, keep it. Don't send it. Don't send this messenger because it is going to come back to you with, with destruction. 
قال وأعجب من ذلك أن النظرة تجرح القلب جرحا فيتبعها جرحا على جرح ثم لا يمنعه ألم الجراحة من استدعاء تكرارها He says one of the amazing you know, strange things about this looking at uh, the thing that Allah SWT does not want you to look at He said when you look it causes your heart to be injured it causes injury to the heart and when you look again another injury will happen and you know when you are injured you learn lesson usually you don't go to that place you don't repeat it but this is not the case when it comes to see it it causes the injury and then you look and then you will be injured again and then you look and then you will be injured again and the injury will keep increasing you don't feel the pain yeah you don't feel the pain yeah, that's why you see the, the sisters during the time of Nuh, uh, I'm sorry, Yusuf alayhi salam, it says what? قَطَّعَنَا أَيْدِيَهُنَّ قَطَّعَنَا أَيْدِيَهُنَّ You know, it, it's not once, you know, they cut. They keep cutting. Because they saw somebody who they cannot be patient. <laughs> How can they be patient? It is impossible for them to be patient. Because Yusuf, أُعْطِيَ شَطْرَ الْحُسْنِ Half of the beauty is given to Yusuf alayhi salam. When they saw him, they got distracted. You know, you see they cut their hand and the hand is bleeding and they don't feel the pain. They keep cutting. They're looking and cutting, cutting, cutting. You know, there's a physical injury. That one that we're talking about is the spiritual injury. That one is the spiritual, you know, the, the, the one for those sisters, spiritual and they're also physical. That's why you can see when they saw Yusuf السلام, and he lives in the house of the Aziz. In one of the top you know, authorities in the city. Those sisters know for sure they will never get that person. They cannot reach him because he's, he is in the house of somebody who is on the top. They can't reach him. But subhanAllah, the pain is in the heart. They kept on talking about it. The city, everyone is talking. Every sister who saw that uh, moment uh, talking about the case. It became an issue, big issue in the city. That's the reason why Yusuf went to jail. They did not send him to jail because he was uh, doing something wrong. They sent him to jail to protect the city and the community and the sisters from anything. To keep him aside, you know, that was injustice, absolutely injustice. But that was the decision they take to keep him away from the eyes of anyone. Because they realize that the, uh, the, the problem is going to, uh, to be so, so big if Yusuf is to be in the, in the presence. So this is also another example of uh, people who look at something that they cannot be patient and they cannot get it, you know, at the end of the day they'll be, they'll be suffering. So he says it causes a person to be desensitized. You know, things that can harm a person, they will come and harm him, but he will not realize the injury they are causing him. تتبع نظرة في نظرة في إثر كل مليحة ومليح وتظن ذاك وتظن ذاك دواء جرحك وهو في تحقيق تجريح على تجريح فذبحت طرفك باللحاظ وبالبكاء فالقلب منك ذبيح أي ذبيح ابن القيم says I have also some uh, uh, poem that I, I, I made you know concerning that matter he says, I, I was talking about that person, you know, who is always looking at the opposite gender. He says, He kept on doing it. Look after another one. You are just looking at every maliha, means a beautiful sister and a handsome person. Keeps looking at them. وَتَظُنُّ ذَاكَ دَوَاءَ جُرْحِكَ وَهُوَ فِي التَّحْقِيقِ تَجْرِحٌ عَلَى التَّجْرِحِ He said, and you think that this is going to cure the injury that was caused at the first place. And then he keep looking, thinking that this is the cure for the injury. Luqayim says, no, it's actually increasing the injury. It's causing another injury on top of the previous one. فَذَبَحْتَ طَرْفَكَ بِالْلِحَاضِ وَبِالْبُكَاءِ فَالْقَلْبُ مِنْكَ ذَبِيحٌ أَيُّذِي he said, you are doing nothing except slaughtering your heart, killing your heart by using your eyesight to look at those things which will bring nothing to you except destruction. So your heart will become the real slaughtered 
slotted one. وقد قيل حبس الحظات أيسر من دوام الحسرات. And that's why somebody says closing your eyes and lowering your gaze and controlling your eyesight is easier than being patient when the pain comes after you look. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good and tawfiq. As I always tell you that on uh, Monday, I have other commitments, so I will stop here inshallah. We have around seven minutes for questions. Abdurrahman, if there is any question, please do help us with them. I mean, There is no questions, no? Okay. So these days, uh, if you open your phone, chances of you uh, not coming across any future reading of the digital, maybe zero percent. So, what should a person do in this regard? Uh, Abdurrahman, can you come back? Uh, say the question again, please. I was saying, Sheikh, that uh, these days, yani, the moment you open your phone, and the chances of you uh, not coming across the opposite gender, in terms of a video or a picture or anything, it's like very low. So, what should we do in these situations? Okay, Raman, I don't know what exactly are you referring to because sometimes some of the phones, maybe when you open them, the the, per, the first thing that will come as a welcoming image is those ones. Uh, those one I guess could be changed, uh, but the one that cannot be avoided, the person should try his best, you know, and uh, stay away from them. If you are referring to the videos, I would advise well, a person shouldn't waste his time chasing those videos that people are sharing any so much as. Uh, at the moment you open and you see that this video has uh, inappropriate pictures, you just uh, stay away from it because you have a, lo a lot of alternatives, you know, drama. You have so many other alternatives. The same information you will be getting from that one, you have other uh, places to get information. And uh, I see nowadays, okay, I think it's from before, but I just don't realize, but uh, YouTube uh, takes uh, some pictures, some images of the video and put them as the and the first thing you see in the video so sometimes from that one yeah. you yeah, sometimes from that one you already know what exactly you're going to be seeing and as i was saying if uh, something comes the moment you open it and you see those inappropriate images the best is just to shut it down and uh, it's better to cure your heart rather than listening to the news which you can't do nothing you, know, you cannot do anything even if you hear that yes this is what is happening then what can you do in most instances there is nothing you can do yeah so it's better to protect your heart rather than going through those yeah. uh, so when we watch lectures we should not uh, we should also not look at the opposite gender at all for the sisters is better the scholar said the emphasis the system is very bad for the sisters it is better for them yes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also commanded them but as I said the emphasis you know on the sisters is not as the emphasis on the brothers that's why they look at the one who is teaching you know the emphasis on them is not like the emphasis on the brothers. The brothers is strictly prohibited. But since the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam let Aisha to come and see the brothers who are watching uh, things and they also used to look uh, whenever there is a need and then it is okay when she look at the one who is teaching, teaching her there shouldn't be any any problem as long as uh, she does it uh, modestly and she doesn't increase it you know, and keep uh, looking or focusing so much on the images of that uh, person you know the eye is also applicable on them when Allah SWT says they are also advised to lower their gaze yeah. but as I said as the scholars have mentioned the emphasis on them is not like that which we find on the brothers why because the one who is always been in trouble is the sister 
So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strictly, be, uh, I mean, prohibit uh, that from the brother's side. Because those who are the ones, when they see, they couldn't be patient, sometimes they use force to get what they want. No matter how much uh, a sister try to stay away, sometimes somebody will use force. Yeah. So that's why, as uh, I said, the emphasis on the brothers is, is more. As for sisters watching the lectures given by the brothers, they say, oh, okay, they used to do it in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or there is a game uh, by the brothers and she watch. So it's okay. Yeah. But as I said, it's always better for her also to lower her gaze and to control her, her heart, inshallah. Okay, Barakallahu Fikum wa Ahsana Ilaykum fi dunya wal akhira in the Hubikuli Jameen in Kafil. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka to be like. See you inshallah in the next class tomorrow with the Riyadh Salihin. Barakallahu Fikum, Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.